Good morning and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring and that's my fine wife, Beth. Yesterday, on our Rich Thoughts for Breakfast call, we discussed eight things the Word of God, well, we didn't finish it. (laughs) We started talking about eight things the Word of God says about you so that we can all begin to see ourselves the way God sees us. We're going to do a very brief review before we finish the eight things the Word of God says about each of us. Number one, you're a child of the Most High God. You're a child of the Most High God. It's not going to take time to read them, but yesterday we gave you four scriptures. Genesis 1.26, Genesis 1.26, Hebrews 2.11, Hebrews 2.11 in the New Living Translation, Romans 15.13, Romans 15, 13 in the Living Bible, and 1 Peter 1, 5, 1 Peter 1, 5 in the classic Amplified Bible. And we talked to, we, we talked about how when you put these four scriptures together, they form the way that every believer should want to be known. Amen. And we gave you an example of that. This is Harold. He is a born-again child of God who created him in his image and after his likeness, whose older brother is Jesus, who endued Harold with the power of the Holy Spirit and empowered him to achieve great things for the kingdom of God while tormenting the devil. And, of course, my husband loves that tormenting devil. I do very much. Had to throw that in there. Number two, you are the head and not the tail. Now, this was important. Deuteronomy 28, 13. Deuteronomy 28, verse 13 says, And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. We need to get a hold of this, personalize it. The Lord shall make thee. It's not anybody else. It's the Lord our great God, Jehovah Elohim, the Almighty One, will make you. And we're not talking about just making you an assistant to an assistant and or even an angel. God Almighty will make you the head and not the tail. Number three, you're above and not beneath. Deuteronomy 28.13, 28.13. And thou shalt be above only and shall not be beneath. Is that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. God does not talk just to hear himself speak. He says what he means, it means what he says. If things are, well, if things aren't going the way you want them to go, if you're continually feeling beneath, like the tail, then perhaps it's time to do a little self-inventory in his presence. Mm -hmm. Now let's pick up where we left off yesterday. Number four, you are a joint heir with Christ. In Romans 8, verse 17, this is what it says in Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are going to share his glory. We want, I want to read you something that we found. God has given us the spirit whereby we call him Father, then we are his children, which is plain, fair, and clear reasoning. Then he adds, if children, then heirs. Though this does not hold true in all families, because all children are not heirs. Frequently, the firstborn may take all the estate. But with God, listen, so long as we are children, we have equal rights. And if children, then heirs. He goes on to say, heirs of God. For if they are heirs, they inherit their father's property. God is the father. Then therefore, God's heirs. Well, that God hath another son, one who is the firstborn of every creature. Exactly so. Therefore, we, if we be heirs, as Christ Jesus is an heir of all things, we are joint heirs with Christ. I think you'll be able to see that links in a chain, these different truths draw each other on. The spirit of adoption proves the fact of adoption. By the act of adoption, we become children. 
if children, then heirs, and if heirs, heirs of God. But since there is another heir, we must therefore be joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Blessed is the man to whom this reasoning is not abstract, but experimental. Happy is he who follows the apostles step by step and say, yes, I have this morning the spirit of a son. I know that my heart loves God and I look to him as my father with trust, with confidence, with love. Then I am surely his son because I have the spirit of a son. Then I am his heir. I am an heir of God and thus my faith lays hold upon this thrice precious words of this glorious text. I am a joint heir with Christ. What I've read to you was preached by Charles Spurgeon at the Metropolitan Tabernacle in England on Sunday, July 28, 1861. Wow. Time never changes the word of God. It still preaches today. Number five, you're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. God can and will bless you wherever you are. Where you are when you receive revelatory insight, a rhema word, or make a spiritual discovery. Are you in your prayer closet or wherever your, wherever your secret place is? I think we've all experienced divine revelation in these places. But certainly God will speak to you wherever you might be. I've had God speak to me while driving in a car, standing in a shower, being at work, in church, walking down the street. And yes, even sitting in that place where we all visit during the day. Oh, Harold. (laughs) Couldn't help you. Throw it in. There are some who feel you have to take on a somber attitude in the midst of a confessional booth to hear from God. That's not true. We can hear from God anywhere and anytime. Matter of fact, we need to be. Right. By the same token, we can also be blessed by God anywhere, in any time. Deuteronomy 28.3, 28.3, King James. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Here's the point. God wants to bless us, you, me, each of us, no matter where we are. In fact, he wants to bless us everywhere we are, because he's just that kind of God. And here's some really great news. God wants to bless you right now. Hallelujah. Number six, you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You know, Harold and I have been intrigued by Romans 8.37. That's just before Romans 8.38, everybody knows. But Romans 8.37 says this, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So we decided to look up conquer in Strong's Concordance. And it's the Greek word G5245. G5245, and it means to be more than a conqueror, to gain a surpassing victory. I love that word, surpassing victory. But we also notice that conquer comes from the root word G3528. G3528, which is translated 24 out of 28 times as overcome. So it became obvious to us that in order to become a kingdom conqueror, we must first be a world overcomer. So what does the word have to say about being an overcomer? Let's let's just begin with an example from the story of David and Goliath. That's found in 1 Samuel 17. It's actually one of my, well, I don't even know how to pick a favorite scripture, but it's one of my favorites. <laughs> 1 Samuel 17, verse 9, in today's international version. It says, if he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Now, David was not fighting this battle in his own strength. Believe me, he wouldn't have been saying those words. He knew that in his heart that God would give him the victory. As we fight the good fight, we've got to know that God will give us the victory. We can also have the confidence that as we fight the good fight, God will protect us, considering the words of, say, 
so many words, but let's choose Jeremiah 119. Jeremiah 119 in the New International Version. We're using this word overcome. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God says that you and I have the power, the ability to overcome and conquer every attack of the enemy. Can anybody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Number seven, you're guaranteed a harvest for whatever seed you sow. Galatians 6, 7, 6, mm-hmm. 7, classic amplify. Do not be deceived and deluded and misled. God will not allow himself to be sneered at, scorned, disdained, or mocked by mere pretensions, professions, or by his precepts being set aside. He inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. Here it comes. For whatever man sows, that, that only, is what he'll reap. Ask the Lord what else he would have me say about this seventh point. And I was reminded that the key is found in the last sentence. For whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he'll reap. That's a really great scripture to personalize. For whatever Sarah sows, that and that only is what she will reap. Personalize it for yourself. Number eight, you have the mind of Christ. We preach this so often, but we really want you to get it. In 1 Corinthians 2, 16, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16 in the classic Amplified Bible, it says, but we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah, and do hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. With the mind of Christ, we can fully accept, appreciate, and activate the principles of the word, when it like what it says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. We can because we have the mind of Christ working, fully functioning within us. While our nat- natural mind is saying, no, I can't possibly do these things that God requires or says I can do, our spiritual mind is saying, oh, yes, you can. The word says you can do all things through Christ. Therefore, you can. So if you say, I can't, then you're giving place and strength and power and authority to to someone you don't want to because you're perceiving your inabilities to achieve what God himself said you could do. However, if we do say, I can do all things, I can do all things, we are intensifying and fortifying and magnifying that ability in our lives. So we are choosing the spirit over the natural. You know, honey, with the mind of Christ, we can do all things. And I believe that these scriptures, these eight points, make it clear that each of you, each of us, we're no different than any other believer who ever drew a breath on planet Earth. But we believe. But we believe. And we need to believe what the Word of God says about each of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've been blessed by the teaching, go to heraldhearing.com. Up at the top where it says, sow a seed. Just ask God what seed he'd have you put in the ground. Do what he says. That's all we'll ever ask. And until tomorrow morning at 830 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye-bye.